Chapter 4, A Dirty Deed. Egags! exclaimed Drake with his glass slipping down his nose. What's he doing here? Someone else must have hired him, said Mary. After all, we're not the only ones from our class who are in the budding botanist junior rose club. There's Peter Underwood, who won last year, and of course Sloane Westcott. Her mother makes her. As... And as they watched horrified, Frisco declared to them, I'm here to save the day. Everyone gathered around him, clapping and exclaiming. Peter Underwood approached Frisco, and while neither Drake nor Nell could hear what they said, they shook hands while Frisco handed him a business card. Behind them, Sloan Westcott stamped her foot and said, What about me? So he handed her a business card as well. Then Frisco whipped out his magnifying glass and began examining a bouquet of slime-colored roses. Quick, scientist, now exclaimed Drake, pushing up his glasses. We have no time to lose. We must find the solution before Frisco saves the day. Check. Without wasting another second, they threw on their rain gear and hustled out the door. To the lab, cried Jake as he climbed on his bike. For further analysis, cried Nell as she climbed on hers. Pete. Peace, my people, said Tess, giving the peace sign. Oh, do be careful, cried Mary as she waved goodbye with her white hanky. The lap was quite comfy, just a thing after pedaling through the mud puddles and gloom. Once inside, Drake pulled a book off the shelf and joined, now at the lab table. Together they found the right section. Irregular situations. What to do when your roses look like swamp slime and your arch enemy, arch enemy vows to save the day. After they read the section, they shared their observations. They jotted, they sharpened pencils, they scratched their heads, they thought very hard, and through all his head scratching and hard thinking, they developed a hypothesis. All good scientists know that a hypothesis is merely their best guess to what is happening. We must test our hypothesis, said Nell firmly. Check, said Drake, and so they did, with a little help from Mrs. Doyle. Afterward, Nell sat with a satisfied nod, just as we thought. Indeed, replied Drake, our hypothesis is correct. They gathered their evidence and hurried back to the budding botanist junior rose club, arriving just in the nick of time. All the club members were seated in front of the room facing Frisco. And finally, Frisco was saying, my scientific conclusion is it was the water. Without a doubt, it was definitely the water. I'm sure of it, positive, to no other possible explanations. And he sat down with a smirk. Peter Underwood shook Frisco's hand and thanked him for getting to the bottom of the matter. In return, Frisco handed Peter a bill. Oh, dear me, said the judge, rising from his seat. He shuffled through some papers on his clipboard. Ahem, well, then I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but seeing as the water was bad, this year's contest is, um, can't hold everything, cried Drake. And now everyone gasped as they stepped to the front of the room. Drake unzipped his backpack and withdrew a bouquet of roses. They were a stunning pale pink, the color of morning sunrise, quite lovely and deep. Oh, breathed the audience. Then Drake withdrew another bouquet of roses from his backpack. This bouquet, however, was not so lovely. In fact, it was downright ugly. It was the color of bird dew. The audience gasped in horror. Ew! Just this morning, said Drake in his most professional voice, these were all beautiful roses. Mrs. Doyle's roses, Edna, now, which she generously donated. All in the name of science, remarked Drake as he began to pace the room. Earlier, we conducted a thorough examination of the competition's roses. Based upon our observations, we suspected something was not right. Not right at all. Allow scientists now to explain. Thank you, Detective Doyle. First of all, we noticed some discolorations along the rose stems. Second, at the site of each discoloration was a tiny hole, as if the stems had been pricked by a pin. Most suspicious, Drake commented, stopping his pacing. He raised his eyebrow at the audience. Indeed, agreed now. We developed a hypothesis and tested it. Worked like a charm. You see, the results before you, bird doo doo roses. <clears throat> yes, quite, said Mary, but how did you do it? Excellent question, Miss Pendleton, Drake responded. We're coming to that. Hopefully after I leave, griped Frisco. Now clasped her hands behind and began to pace. Ask yourselves this question. If a tree doesn't have a heart to pump liquid through its system, then how does the water travel from its roots all the way to the top of the tree? The answer is, of course, capillary action, Drake replied. Instead of veins, plants have capillaries, which are very tiny tubes, added now. You see, water molecules are rather sticky, said Drake. If you spill water on a table, now continued, water molecules stick together in a puddle. In the same way, water molecules climb up the sides of a capillary tube, sticking together and traveling through the plant. It's quite remarkable, really. 
And your point is, said Peter Underwood, frowning. Drake replied calmly. The perpetrator simply injected dye into the stems using a hypodermic syringe. Capillary action transported the dye through the roses, changing their blossoms into different colors. But why, asked Mary, why would anyone do something so dreadful? Lee rotten. And then there followed a great silence, because after all, it really was an excellent question, and no one had an excellent answer, except one. Suddenly, Tess O'Brien crumpled to the floor. I confess, I confess, it was me, I did it, I did the dirty deed. She put her face in her hands and sobbed, oh, sobbed quite terribly. Everyone guessed, including Drake and Nell. But why, Mary asked again. For a moment, Tess didn't answer because she was so busy sobbing. But finally, she wiped her eyes and blew her nose on her sleeve. Because I'm so horrible at gardening. Because every year someone else wins. Because, because, well, just look at my bouquet. It's not only slimy, it's puny. I mean, after all, I'm supposed to be earthy. People who are earthy should be whizzes at gardening. I couldn't stand it anymore. I cracked under the pressure. There, there, murmured Mary as she put her arm around Tess. It was quite a hubbub. In the end, Mary agreed to help Tess by giving her private gardening lessons. In return, Tess would help Mary align her plants. All in all, everyone was quite satisfied. Call us any time, said Drake, handing Mary her business card. I shall, I shall, said Mary. You and Nell have proved ever so brilliant. Cheerio. Later that day, Drake wrote in his lab notebook, Swamp Slime Rose Case Salt. Tess used super soupy swampy slime juice and other disgusting dyes developed and sold by Frisco. Received open invitation to all future garden parties. Paid in full.